Hemorrhoids, commonly known as piles, can be a source of discomfort and concern for many. In this video, we'll explore multiple aspects of hemorrhoids, symptoms, causes, and treatment options. The symptoms of hemorrhoids can vary from person to person, but common signs include rectal bleeding, itching or irritation in the anal region, pain or discomfort during bowel movements, swelling around the anus, the presence of a lump near the anus, and occasionally, leakage of feces. Hemorrhoids develop when the veins in the rectal and anal area become swollen and inflamed. There are several factors that can contribute to their development, including straining during bowel movements, chronic constipation or diarrhea, sitting for long periods, obesity, and pregnancy. Now let's discuss symptoms in details. Number 1 is Rectal Bleeding One of the most common symptoms of hemorrhoids is rectal bleeding, which typically occurs during or after bowel movements. The blood may be bright red or darker in color, depending on the severity of the hemorrhoid. This bleeding is caused by the irritation and inflammation of the swollen blood vessels in the anal and rectal area. While rectal bleeding can be alarming, it's important to note that it's usually not a sign of a serious medical condition, but it should still be evaluated by a healthcare professional to rule out other potential causes, such as colorectal cancer or inflammatory bowel disease. Number 2. Itching or Irritation in the Anal Region Hemorrhoids can also cause intense itching or irritation in the anal region, often accompanied by a burning sensation. This discomfort is due to the inflammation of the surrounding tissues and the presence of mucus and stool residue in the affected area. Scratching the itch can further aggravate the condition and increase the risk of infection. Using gentle cleansing wipes or applying soothing creams can help alleviate the itching and provide temporary relief. Number 3 is pain or discomfort during bowel movements. Hemorrhoids can make bowel movements painful and uncomfortable, especially if they are thrombosed or prolapsed. Thrombosed hemorrhoids occur when blood clots form within the swollen veins, leading to severe pain and swelling. Prolapsed hemorrhoids occur when internal hemorrhoids protrude outside the anal opening, causing discomfort and pressure. The pain during bowel movements is often described as sharp or stabbing and may persist for several hours after defecation. Taking stool softeners and using topical pain relievers can help alleviate this discomfort and make bowel movements less painful. Number 4 is Swelling around the anus Swelling or bulging around the anus is another common symptom of hemorrhoids, particularly external hemorrhoids. This swelling is caused by the enlargement of the blood vessels and surrounding tissues in the anal area. The swelling may vary in size and can be accompanied by tenderness and redness. Applying cold compresses or ice packs to the affected area can help reduce swelling and provide temporary relief from discomfort. Number 5 is A lump near the anus. In some cases, hemorrhoids may cause the formation of a lump or bump near the anus, especially if they become thrombosed or prolapsed. This lump is often tender to the touch and may feel firm or spongy depending on the severity of the hemorrhoid. Thrombosed hemorrhoids typically present as a hard, painful lump, while prolapsed hemorrhoids may feel softer and more pliable. It's essential to consult a healthcare professional if you notice any unusual lumps or bumps near the anus, as they may require medical intervention to prevent complications. Number 6 is Leakage of Feces In advanced cases of hemorrhoids, particularly when associated with prolapse or sphincter dysfunction, individuals may experience leakage of feces or mucus from the anus. This leakage occurs due to the weakening of the anal sphincter muscles and the inability to control bowel movements effectively. It can lead to embarrassment and discomfort, affecting the individual's quality of life. Treatment options for this symptom may include dietary modifications, pelvic floor exercises, and surgical interventions to repair or strengthen the anal sphincter muscles. Recognizing these symptoms is the first step towards seeking appropriate medical care and finding relief from hemorrhoids. Understanding the underlying causes of hemorrhoids is crucial for effective management and prevention. Let's explore six common factors that contribute to the development of hemorrhoids. Number one is straining during bowel movements. One of the primary causes of hemorrhoids is excessive straining during bowel movements. When you strain to pass stools, it increases pressure on the veins in the rectal and anal area, leading to swelling and inflammation. 
Straining is often associated with conditions such as constipation, where stools are hard and difficult to pass. Chronic straining can weaken the supporting tissues in the anal canal, making it more susceptible to hemorrhoidal formation. 2. Chronic constipation or diarrhea. Both chronic constipation and diarrhea can predispose individuals to hemorrhoids. Constipation, characterized by infrequent bowel movements and difficulty passing stools, requires excessive straining, which can strain the blood vessels in the anal region. Conversely, diarrhea, which results in frequent and loose stools, can irritate the delicate tissues in the anus and cause inflammation. Maintaining regular bowel habits through a high-fiber diet and adequate hydration is essential for preventing constipation and diarrhea-related hemorrhoids. 3. Sedentary Lifestyle Prolonged sitting or a sedentary lifestyle can also contribute to the development of hemorrhoids. Sitting for extended periods puts pressure on the veins in the pelvic region, hindering blood flow and increasing the risk of hemorrhoidal congestion. Individuals who spend many hours sitting at a desk or in front of a computer are particularly vulnerable. Taking breaks to stand, stretch, and move around can help improve circulation and reduce the strain on the anal veins. 4. Obesity Obesity is a significant risk factor for hemorrhoids due to the increased pressure it places on the abdomen and pelvic area. Excess body weight can lead to abdominal straining and contribute to conditions such as constipation and chronic venous insufficiency, which are known triggers for hemorrhoids. Losing weight through a combination of diet and exercise can help alleviate pressure on the anal veins and reduce the likelihood of developing hemorrhoids. 5. Pregnancy Hemorrhoids are a common complaint during pregnancy, affecting up to half of all pregnant women. The hormonal changes and increased abdominal pressure associated with pregnancy can cause the veins in the rectal and anal area to become swollen and inflamed. Additionally, the growing uterus puts pressure on the pelvic veins, further exacerbating the problem. Pregnant women are advised to maintain good bowel habits, stay hydrated, and avoid prolonged sitting to reduce the risk of hemorrhoids during pregnancy. 6. Genetic Predisposition some individuals may have a genetic predisposition to developing hemorrhoids. Inherited factors such as weak vein walls or impaired venous valves can make certain individuals more susceptible to hemorrhoidal enlargement. While genetic predisposition alone may not cause hemorrhoids, it can increase the likelihood of developing them in conjunction with other contributing factors such as straining or constipation. Addressing these underlying causes through lifestyle modifications, dietary changes, Inappropriate medical interventions can help reduce the risk of hemorrhoids and improve overall anal health. Now we discuss types of hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids can be classified into two main types based on their location and severity, internal hemorrhoids and external hemorrhoids. Let's explore each type in detail. 1. Internal hemorrhoids. Internal hemorrhoids develop inside the rectum, where there are fewer pain-sensing nerves, making them less likely to cause discomfort or pain. These hemorrhoids are typically graded based on their severity. Grade I, internal hemorrhoids that bleed but do not prolapse, i.e., protrude outside the anal canal. Grade II, hemorrhoids that prolapse during bowel movements but spontaneously retract back into the rectum. Grade III, hemorrhoids that prolapse during bowel movements and require manual reduction, pushing them back into the rectum. Grade 4, hemorrhoids that are permanently prolapsed and cannot be manually reduced. Internal hemorrhoids may cause symptoms such as rectal bleeding, itching, or discomfort, especially during bowel movements. Treatment options for internal hemorrhoids include dietary modifications, topical treatments, rubber band ligation, sclerotherapy, infrared coagulation, or hemorrhoidectomy, depending on the severity of symptoms. 2. External hemorrhoids. External hemorrhoids develop outside the anus, where there are more pain-sensing nerves, making them more prone to causing pain and discomfort. These hemorrhoids may appear as small lumps or bumps near the anal opening and can be felt or seen externally. Symptoms of external hemorrhoids may include pain, itching, swelling, and irritation. External hemorrhoids can develop thrombosis, where a blood clot forms within the swollen vein, causing severe pain and swelling. Thrombosed external hemorrhoids may require medical intervention, such as incision and drainage, to relieve symptoms. 
Conservative treatments for external hemorrhoids include sitz baths, topical creams or ointments, and pain relievers. In some cases, surgical removal, hemorrhoidectomy, may be necessary to alleviate symptoms or prevent complications. 3. Mixed hemorrhoids. In some cases, individuals may have a combination of both internal and external hemorrhoids, referred to as mixed hemorrhoids. Mixed hemorrhoids may present with a variety of symptoms and require a comprehensive treatment approach tailored to the specific characteristics of each hemorrhoid. Doctor, understanding the differences between internal and external hemorrhoids is essential for proper diagnosis and treatment. If you experience symptoms of hemorrhoids, such as rectal bleeding, itching, pain, or swelling, it's important to consult a healthcare professional for evaluation and guidance. Diagnosing hemorrhoids typically involves a combination of medical history review, physical examination, and, in some cases, additional tests or procedures to rule out other conditions. Let's explore the diagnostic process for hemorrhoids in detail. 1. Medical History Review During the initial assessment, the healthcare provider will review the patient's medical history, including symptoms, duration, severity, and any relevant risk factors. They may inquire about bowel habits, dietary habits, previous episodes of hemorrhoids, and family history of anal conditions. Providing detailed information about symptoms and lifestyle factors can help the healthcare provider make an accurate diagnosis and recommend appropriate treatment. 2. Physical examination. A physical examination of the anal and rectal area is essential for evaluating the presence and severity of hemorrhoids. The healthcare provider may perform a digital rectal examination DRE, where a gloved, lubricated finger is inserted into the rectum to feel for internal hemorrhoids or other abnormalities. External hemorrhoids can be visually inspected for swelling, inflammation, or the presence of blood clots. The healthcare provider may also assess the tone and strength of the anal sphincter muscles and check for signs of fecal incontinence or other complications. 3. Proctoscopy or anoscopy. In some cases, the healthcare provider may perform a proctoscopy or anoscopy to obtain a closer view of the anal canal and rectum. These procedures involve inserting a thin, flexible tube with a light source and camera, proctoscope or onoscope, into the anal canal to visualize the internal hemorrhoids and surrounding tissues. Proctoscopy and anoscopy allow for a more detailed examination of the hemorrhoids and help determine their size, location, and severity. 4. Additional tests or procedures. In certain situations, additional tests or procedures may be recommended to confirm the diagnosis of hemorrhoids or rule out other conditions. These may include colonoscopy, if rectal bleeding is persistent or accompanied by other concerning symptoms, such as changes in bowel habits or unexplained weight loss, a colonoscopy may be performed to evaluate the entire colon and rectum for other potential causes of bleeding, such as colorectal cancer or inflammatory bowel disease. Flexible sigmoidoscopy, similar to colonoscopy but focusing on the lower part of the colon and rectum, flexible sigmoidoscopy may be recommended if colonoscopy is not indicated or feasible. Imaging studies, in rare cases, imaging studies such as ultrasound or MRI may be used to assess the extent of hemorrhoidal disease or identify complications such as thrombosis or abscess formation. Accurate diagnosis is crucial for developing an appropriate treatment plan tailored to the individual needs of the patient. If you experience symptoms of hemorrhoids or have concerns about your anal health, don't hesitate to consult a healthcare professional for evaluation and guidance.